Good morning. Well, I mean, I don't think you could get a stronger message being sent to the Prime Minister after 100 of his own MPs said that they didn't back his COVID restrictions. You've now got uh, the seventh biggest swing in a by-election ever away from a government, uh, losing a 23,000-seat majority to the Lib Dems in a Leave seat. It's quite an extraordinary loss, isn't it? Well, Mike, look, I, I, I'm a backbencher. I'm not a government spokesman. I haven't come on your show this morning to sugar the pill and you know, try and make the usual excuses mm. about, you know, midterm blues. If, if you're asking me my honest opinion, which is, I think, why you, you've invited me to come on. Indeed. This is a seriously bad defeat. You know, this is, it's been a Tory seat for 200 years and with a majority of nearly 23,000. And we lost it in the early hours of this morning by nearly 6,000. Mm. And I honestly believe that the Prime Minister should see this as a massive wake-up call from traditional conservative supporters and we should learn from this we should have the humility to learn and if we try and blow it off that would be completely the wrong thing to do that is my that's my honest opinion yeah i mean my worry mark is that i've got this vision of the future sometime far around about five o'clock this afternoon where boris johnson holds another press conference talks some more about the booster and how great we are at rolling out the booster jab and then sort of hands over to chris witty who tells us more some more bad news about what's coming down the pipe and my worry is if he does that then he is proving himself to be completely and utterly out of touch with the rest of the country well uh, the prime minister runs the country not chris witty are you and, sure? You know, maybe, maybe Mr. Witty needs to be reminded of that. I think that's what I and a lot of my backbench colleagues feel. You know, who voted for Chris Witty? No yeah. one. Uh, well, exactly. So, so, but returning to you know where we are as a party, these are traditional Conservative supporters who are clearly unhappy with the direction of the government. Now, look, on a human level, you know, the Prime Minister's got two young kids he's just had a newborn i don't mean to be disparaging you know when you see him he looks pretty knackered yeah you know for all we know he was up doing nappies last night waiting you know for the result to come in so you know he has had a tumultuous year a and the arrival of a newborn is a wonderful thing for any parent but you know it it, it 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 puts pressures on your time so i think you know the pm needs to use this time at christmas to try and recuperate and to come out refreshed in the new year and lay out to the people of this country the kind of country that he wants to create. I think part of the problem uh, yesterday is that our message has become diffused and we're not being clear enough about what we want to achieve as, as a party, both in terms of communicating with traditional Conservative supporters, but also you know, people who maybe voted for us for the first mm. time in 2019. We, we need to hold the red wall as you guys in the media would say, if we're going to win the next general election. And in order to do that, we need to get back to some clearly focused priorities. And I think, you know, the PM would be would be well advised to learn from this. I think he's lost his way, Mark, and I'm not expecting you to agree with me on this, but Steve Baker, I think, makes a very good point when he talks about making sure the Conservative Party does not forget the Conservative values that it's supposed to represent. And I've had quite a few um, uh, communications from people today who have said it's not simply COVID, it's not simply SAGE, it's not simply the migrant problem, it's not simply uh, the European problem, it's not simply one thing, it's everything. And Boris Johnson has gone so far away from the guy who was elected in 2019 with an 80 seat majority. He's become obsessed with the green agenda. He hasn't stopped migrants coming into this country. Um, he's now trying to lock down the country again uh, in all but name. And it's simply the, the, the ordinary people of this country have had enough. Well, look, Mike, call me a bit old fashioned, but we were elected on a manifesto, right? You know, we, we stood in front of the British people in 2019 and said, you know, if you give us the privilege of running the country, here's what we're going to do. Now, at the heart of that, let's be fair, at the heart of that manifesto was a promise to get Brexit done after three years of utter chaos in Parliament, right? Something I witnessed on a daily basis, and which you and I have discussed before. We got Brexit done. There's still unfinished business on Article 16, yeah. but we got Brexit done. So yeah. to be fair, the PM kept, if you like, the core promise in his manifesto. But there were lots of other promises in there, you know, why haven't we brought in the legacy bill to protect Northern Ireland veterans? Yes. Forgive me for mentioning it. No, but no you're you quite know, right I to mention strong it. On it. You and I have we've debated this on your programme before. That's just one example of an unkept promise. So, you know, 
I, there, there are there are a lot of people around the prime minister who have lots of different ideas on what to do. If you're if you're a prime minister, you never lack advice. Mm. So you know, my Tutworth worth from Rayleigh and Wickford is go back to your manifesto and implement the pledges on which you were elected. Because yeah. unfortunately, in terms of doing some of those things, we appear to have lost focus. Boris should use Christmas to refocus his government, come out, you know, fighting in January, as it were, and get back to implementing mm. the promises we put to the British people. Yes. That, I think, is the best way to proceed. And, I mean, we know Downing Street loves a poll. They love to wheel out YouGov polls that tell them that more people want more lockdowns. Well, this poll, this actual poll where people voted in it, uh, actually voted for the one party in Parliament who are against lockdowns. Now, what does that tell you? Well, I, 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 my take on this is this. My partner, Olivia, works in the National Health Service. I'm incredibly proud of her. She's been on the front line against this beast, you know, for 18 months. And what she tells me is that the vast majority of the people who are in ITU with COVID, unfortunately, are unvaccinated. You know, and you've got to have some sympathy for NHS staff. There they are trying to save the lives of people who, in many cases, it wasn't that they didn't get three jabs. They didn't bother to have one. Right. So, so I think in terms of trying to encourage people to get their boosters, that is exactly the right thing. That is the right thing to do. But, but as I say, I, you know, I watch Chris Whitty at these press conferences, and I think I'm sure you're doing your best. But at the end of the day, who elected you? Nobody. Yeah. And he's causing a great deal of um, what can only be described as pain and suffering to a lot of businesses who thought that this was going to be the year they were going to make up for last year. You know, and as much as Boris Johnson tells people, keep going out, keep going to support your local businesses, keep going and having your Christmas parties, nobody's having them because he's scared the living daylights out of everybody and told them to prioritise their socialisation. Well, he can get stuffed as far as I'm concerned. Well, uh, 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 um, Mike, those are your words. But, they are. But, uh, I'm not happy. I'm, I'm quite wound up about it because there are people who are trying to make a living. And he seems to think, like all these other idiots in, in, in government, that the NHS is the only business that we produce in this country. And quite frankly, if it wasn't for the rest of us, there wouldn't be an NHS because we pay for it. Well, Mike, you know, all the people taking these decisions are on the public payroll. Exactly. You know, I'm an MP. I'm on the public payroll, right? People working in the private sector, you know, that they have a slightly higher risk of getting their mortgage paid, you know, by the end of the month. If yeah. they're trying to run a restaurant or a small cafe, they're already mortgaged up to the hilt, probably. They've got a, a bounce back loan that at some point they're going to have to repay. You know, if there are more uh, constraints on their ability to pay off those debts, their lives become more and more difficult. Look, we borrowed three hundred and two billion pounds and I'm on the public accounts committee now. I pay close attention to this. We borrowed three hundred and two billion pounds in the last financial year because we had to keep the economy afloat. I, I think Rishi, in the end, did the right thing. You can't carry on doing that forever. No. So every time you impede economic activity, you make it more difficult to repay that debt. So you have to get the right balance between trying to protect the public and trying to keep the economy keep the economy going. And when I look at Chris Whitty. I think you might know a tremendous amount about medical things. What do you know about economics? Yeah, well, he doesn't know anything about life. This is a bloke, and I'm sorry to be personal about it, but he doesn't have much of a social life. He clearly doesn't enjoy uh, going out with lots of people. Uh, he lives alone. He's a guy that doesn't understand what life is like. He's never been to a pub probably in his life, never mind going out for well, a no, restaurant. Well, no, 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 I'm not going to... I'm, I'm Listen, not... well, I am going to do it, Mark, because I'm sick to death of this bloke dictating to us, right? Now, this is a guy who sat in a committee yesterday and said, oh, we might be all right in a couple of years. Well, I'm sorry, I'm not putting up with it for another couple of years. I'm not having it. Well, my, I'm not going to comment on, you know, Chris Whitty's personal life. That, 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 that's down to him. But, but you, know, it, it, as, you know, I've got constituents, you know, who've been struggling through this. You know, some of their businesses are just starting to recover. And if, 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 you, if you bring in these measures, which mean people start cancelling their bookings left, right and centre, you know, that is directly affecting those people's, those people's livelihoods. But look, coming back to where we came in, right, you know, because there's all this you know, great media speculation. And uh, is that result in North Shropshire last night terminal for the Prime Minister? No, I don't believe it. It is. doesn't have to be, I've but it could be if he doesn't do years. anything about it. Well, look, I can only give you my opinion. 
I've, I've been an MP for 20 years. I've seen lots and lots of by-elections. I don't think that this is terminal, but I do think that it's a very serious wake-up call. If you like, it's the gypsy's warning, yeah? And I think those in number 10 would be well advised to hear it. That is where I think that, you know, the kind of balance of it lies. We need to get back to conservative principles. We need to get back to implementing the manifesto on which the people of this country entrusted us with the privilege of government. You know, we don't need to, to, to put wet towels around our heads and, you know, agonise over this for three no. months. Let's just go back to the programme we were elected on and carry it out. And if we do that, we'll probably be all right. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Please do pass on my best to Boris and tell him to pull his finger out and get himself back to being the man that was elected instead of the man that he has suddenly become. Mark Francois, thank you very much indeed.